Okay, so um, welcome Alexis and Susanna and Antonio and Erez and Stefania, Rexy, Bruno, Rigney and Adam. Um, thanks for coming. So we finished our quiz. And let's see, realize it opens up questions. You can get a dog pass, cross countries. Yeah, again, anything will work on the Proctorio, um, for the Proctorio ID, but that's not, but for the exam, I'll be looking. <laughs> and if you have a rabbit, I'll say, oh, your rabbit took the test, so you don't get any points. It has to be you taking the test. So that's just a note. <laughs> so jokes are fine for quizzes, jokes are not fine for exams. Exams are serious, joke quizzes are a lot, lot less serious. Okay, so I do wanna let you know, um, on Saturday, what's happening on Saturday? Is it your half credit class? Yes, yeah, a half credit <laughs> class and um, this is a conference. So if you signed up for that, um, you still need to register for the conference itself. And I just put the link in the chat box to, to register. Even if you didn't sign up, you can still do that. Um, but hey, you might as well get a half a unit if you're gonna go you know, watch some cool, cool stuff about, about math. And uh, so that's just a note on Saturday. So I put the link to the um, spring conference. Right now we only have, I think I, last time I looked, we only had three students. I, they haven't canceled yet, the college hasn't. And so I'm not saying a word, if they don't cancel it, then we keep it going. Um, the conference doesn't get canceled, but the class might get canceled because I can't really battle for, th you know, say three students, we have to have it. Um, but again, more the better. And it's, it's not a class where there's any exams or anything like that. Um, it's just to give you half credit for going to a math conference. So I think that's worth it. Okay, um, any questions about that before we jump into the quiz? Okay, if there's no questions, I'm gonna jump into the quiz and we're gonna do it a little differently than usual. And that is because we're using Proctorio. Um, I can't do a preview. If I do a preview, it messes everything up. So instead what I did is I copied and pasted the quizzes, quiz onto our notes. So here's the quiz, at least on Google, but looks the same. So the first question is write down an example equation that corresponds to each of the following. So first a hyperboloid of a one sheet. Any suggestions on a hyperboloid of one sheet? Now that's when you have to type out. I used a formula that had the minus plus equal one. Yeah, so. but we need an example, not a formula. Oh. So it should have numbers, Oops. no A's and B's and C's, right? Sorry. See, if you have A's, B's and C's, <laughs> then you have a function of six variables. <laughs> I thought that's what you meant by formula. <laughs> well, the example equation is different than the formula. Okay, there we go, I like that. I'll, I'll grab the first one that was put in, x squared. Plus y squared. Minus z squared. Equals one. So notice that it, that's a hyperboloid because it has um, one negative sign and two positive signs and x, y, and z are all squared, and you have a one to the right, okay? Okay, a non-zero to the right. So that, we know that's a hyperboloid. Um, it's one sheet, and the way I like to remember that it's one sheet is that if you let um, x, y, or z equal zero, then you'll get a solution no matter what. Whereas two sheets, you don't. Two sheets, you don't get a solution on the plane that has this a plane of symmetry. Okay, and by the way, this is not the only example, but what must happen is there must be a positive, a, one negative, two positives for the squared terms. And you must not have zero on the right-hand side and you must have squares everywhere. So there's lots of examples. Okay, and by the way, if you put some numbers in here, like seven X squared, that's fine too. Okay, so how about an ellipsoid? 
What's an example of an ellipsoid, an equation? And again, an example, not the formula. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll give you x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. Technically that's an ellipsoid, but that's not usually what you call that. What do you usually call x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one? A sphere? A sphere. Okay. I did I don't I wouldn't take off points because technically it's an ellipsoid, but it's not a good example. Okay. So give me an example of an ellipsoid that, that really isn't a sphere. Yeah, throw in any number, it doesn't matter. And you have to make sure that all of the variables have a square term in it. So x squared plus y squared plus z over five squared equals one. Any questions on the ellipsoid? Okay, and again, there are many, many different right, correct answers for an ellipsoid. There's even more wrong answers, but you just have to have, make sure that you have no negative signs. You have to make sure that all the X, Y, Zs have a square. And then you have to make sure that you don't have zero on the right-hand side. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, then an elliptic paraboloid. Can you give me an example of an elliptic paraboloid? Yeah, so Z equals, I'm gonna adjust a little bit to make it, yeah, I'll let it go. So Z equals X squared plus Y squared. Okay, that's kind of an example of elliptic paraboloid. Notice that if you erase the Y squared, you get a parabola. If you raise the x squared, you get a parabola. And if you let z equal one, you get a, a circle, which is technically an ellipse. If you put a two here, then it feels more like an ellipse. But I wouldn't take off points if you didn't have the two. Any questions on question one? Does it have to be z or can it be like any mix of the numbers? So Letters. what has to happen is there has to be one of the variables has to not have a square and the other two must have a square. Which okay, one you choose doesn't make a difference. Um, so if we switch X and Z, it's still an elliptic paraboloid. How have I changed it though? So what's the difference between having what I originally had and the switching X and Z? Yeah, we changed the plane. We changed the, we changed it. We really changes the axis of symmetry is what you usually call it. So this has the X axis as the axis of symmetry. Whereas if we had Z equals X squared plus two Y squared, that has a Z axis as the axis of symmetry. Does that make sense? And they're both an elliptic parabola. Any questions at all on prog question one? Okay. So question one basically had an infinite number of choices that were correct. Question two, on the other hand, has exactly one choice that's correct. Okay, so question two is write down the name of each of the following quadric surfaces. So what is, what is cosine of x plus, minus sine of z equals one? What's the name of that? Mm, not that the, the, the name for the quadric surface isn't wave. Here's the hint, it's the very first thing. It's the very first thing we talked about, yeah, it's cylinder. That's a cylinder. Remember that if you're missing, if you are missing a, a coordinate, if there's no Y in this case, you have a cylinder. 
So if you, if you only have two of the letters or variables, it's a cylinder. Okay, let's look at this guy. So x squared minus y squared over two minus z squared equals one. Yeah, that's a hyperboloid. of two sheets. The hyperbola are two sheets. First thing, notice that they all have squares in them. We have a one on the right. We also notice that they're not all the same sign. You don't have all positives. We have one positive, two negatives. Notice that if x is zero, you get the empty set. So that means that the yz plane does not touch this this hyperboloid so it actually breaks it up into the two sheets and that's why it's a hyperboloid of two sheets any questions on part b okay let's go to part c okay what's the the main difference between part c and part b yeah the zero on the right hand side that changes everything all right, what do you have? Because we have a zero. Yeah, that's a cone, okay? That's a cone. If you wanna call it elliptical cone, that's good. So it's an elliptical cone. Any questions on this quiz? Any questions? Okay, for some of you, the hardest part might've been proctorio. I'm not sure, but you know, I just wanna get back. So we don't do proctorio, um, but that won't be until next, uh, next academic year. Sorry about that. Any questions on that? Okay, and you can see there's like kind of two ways of going around this whole do it at home thing. One is to give really, intense kind of word problem-y only um, exams and let you do it as an at-home exam. And the other is to do proctorio. And I'm kind of glad that Bruce did it the other way because that way you get both, you get both styles. Okay, so again, some people like proctorio better. Some people like the, the more wordy, you know, intense exams better, but Whatever it is, it is, you know. It's one of the reasons why we, uh, we switch back and forth is so you can get different styles. Actually, I had a question. I couldn't see a calculator anywhere. Right. Okay, so we, are you we know, not expected to use it at all? Or? Yeah, now let me ask you, look at the quiz. Did you need a calculator? No, I just figured for future. Ah, so for the, the program, future, you know, for the future, I'll, um, if, a, if, if it needs a calculator, which I haven't decided yet. I haven't written your test yet. Yeah, I have a few weeks. Um, I haven't decided whether to write a test where you don't need a calculator. That's what I'll probably end up doing. Or to have one where you need a calculator. If it does need a calculator, I'll embed it because I don't think the proctorial calculator is very good. Do you agree? I don't know if you yeah. remember. Yeah, I remember the first quarter. I, I like yours better. Yeah, it's not mine. It's not mine, actually. The one it's, you provided. Yeah, it's, yes. it's Desmos, actually. Yeah, so I use the Desmos uh, calculator. So if I decide that we really can't do it without having another calculator and with a calculator, then I'll embed the Desmos in. But if you thought you needed a calculator for this particular problem, for this quiz, then you're just way off. Do you agree? There's no need for a calculator in this quiz. Okay, and that's one of the reasons why I had Proctorio on this quiz because there's no calculator needed. And I, in fact, I didn't want you to use, um, say, CalcPlot 3D, look at the pictures, because that's kind of cheating. OK, any questions on that? OK, so. If we have our own, like, TI-84, would nope, that be? Not allowed okay. to use a TI-84. One of the main reasons why I can't let you use a TI-84 is that to Proctorio, a TI-84 and a smartphone look the same. Isn't, I thought there was an app, like an, it was like an online website. I forgot what it was called though. Right, but remember right. Proctorio freezes your, mm -hmm. um, 
it freezes. Oh, but if we have a calculator on on the side, like I have a Casio calculator, just like a handheld one. Yeah. So, so the point okay. is, if you need a calculator, it'll be embedded in the exam. Got it? Okay. Yeah. And thank you. And and I'll probably use Desmos because Desmos is a really good calculator. Do you agree? Those who used it last year, the Desmos worked well. Yeah, everyone seemed to be happy with it. So if there's one that's needed, I'll, I'll probably let you. I'll probably do Desmos. I'm leaning towards not having anything where you need to use a calculator. So everything will be left in, you know, if there, there's numbers, you'll be left with numbers. Okay, you know, so it'll be, you know, seven over 60, 69 or something, and you just leave it as seven over 69. And then you have to worry about it. Again, we're in weird times. Yeah, pies and square roots, you just leave it as PI is just fine. <laughs> that kind of stuff, or cosine of 1.3 or something like that. Um, so that I'm kind of leaning towards that way because then we just don't have to deal with it at all. It's easier. And exams aren't supposed to be realistic. They're supposed to just see if you learn the material. Okay. Um, any other questions about um, anything actually, because we're on Q&A time. So that could be homework problems. It could be, I don't know, questions about the conference. It could be some other question about math. <laughs> Any questions? Is a good time? Could be homework. So I'll give you a moment or so to think about it. Because we, we actually do have a pretty easy day today. That was my promise. I don't think I've ever heard anyone complain about um, the section. Okay, I don't see anyone jumping in with questions. If there aren't, I'm not gonna force you to ask. Are we doing Proctor on Friday? No, no, so I only, I did it now. I might set up a, I might set up a um, practice proctorial. Like that you could do anytime basically. Um, but this one forced you to do it and forcing is important. That's what I've learned. If I don't force it, sometimes you don't try it. So this one actually forced you to do it. So I might set up a practice one for those who had difficulty today. And that would be a no point, just the, what I did in my stats class actually last quarter was one question and the question was, were you able to use Proctorio? <laughs> that was it. And it's with Proctorio. Um, so I might set that up, um, but otherwise um, this is it until the exam. Okay, and again, if it didn't work for you, you can get a computer from the college for free. Um, you do have to give it back. You don't get to keep it forever. Um, you have to give it back at the end of June. Um, but you can get a computer for without having to pay anything if you come to the college. You have to let me know so I can email them so that they know that you're supposed to be getting a computer. That's all. It's an, it's an easy one, but you just have to let me know and you have to let them know you make an appointment and you come on in. Okay, I don't see any questions. So I have a question for you. Who remembers polar coordinates? and how they work. Maybe you can describe how they work. I'm hoping all of you do because that was part of this class. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the ways of looking at it is you have two different numbers. Um, coordinate systems have to have two numbers for R2. And the first is you can call it the radius. I know R stands for radius, but I like to think about it as the distance from the origin. And that will help us out for three dimensions also, by the way. Okay, because radius will turn out to be um, a little ambiguous. So the distance from the origin. Uh, magnitude and displacement, um, that's kind of okay too. Um, although vectors have magnitude, but that doesn't have to be from the origin, but it can be looked at that way. So that kind of works also. So in particular, we had polar coordinates, which means that we had x, y, and you got rid of x, y, and you turned it into r and theta. So let me give you a reminder. So polar coordinates used the distance from the origin 
and the angle from between, I guess, the positive x-axis and the vector from the point origin to the point. So hopefully you remember that because that's really important. Okay, so we had a whole section on polar coordinates and we talked about that. Okay, so now if you think about what we've been doing the last um, week, we've moved into three dimensions. Is that clear? So with polar coordinates, that was sometimes a better way of describing a point. Sometimes rectangular coordinates were a better way of describing a point. So similarly, in three dimensions, there are better ways of describing a point in some circumstances. And in other circumstances, there'll be other ways of describing a point. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today is different ways of describing a point besides just X, Y, Z, because X, Y, Z is what we've had. Any questions on that idea? Okay, the first, the first um, coordinate system that we learned was X, Y, Z. And the second one we're gonna do is actually basically something you've already done before, but we're just gonna extend it to three dimensions and we're just gonna take polar coordinates and extend it to three dimensions. So let me write down what that is or show you what it is because I've got it typed in already. And these are called cylindrical coordinates. So here's a big definition. So cylindrical coordinates are an extension of polar coordinates by adding Z to make the coordinate system three-dimensional. It's very simple. Okay, so here's a picture, which I stole from the textbook, but I'm allowed to do that. So the idea here is we have this point right over here. And you could think of it as, you know, X, Y, Z, which means you start at the origin, you move along the x-axis, then you move along the y-axis, and then you move up the z-axis and you hit that point. And how far you had to go x, y, and z were the coordinates. Okay, another way of doing it is the following. We take this point and we imagine, imagine a big sun up here on the top above the point. And we look at the shadow of that point or the projection of that point onto the XY plane. Do you see that projection down there? So then if you're in the XY plane, you have a point that you can talk about in XY coordinates or in, in polar coordinates. So cylindrical coordinates looks at a point and says, drop it down to the XY plane, look at the coordinates of that point in polar coordinates and then tag on a Z. So it just takes polar coordinates and extends it with an extra Z. Kind of like rectangular coordinates with in 3D takes the 2D and adds a Z in. So same idea, there's nothing more to it. Any questions on this? Any idea, see if you can guess why we call it cylindrical. Any thoughts on why we would call it cylindrical? It is not a coincidence, by the way. Is it because it forms a cylinder? When you say it forms, what does that mean? Oh, it, once you add Z, like it makes it a uh, three dimensional. But what's it? If you have a point, it's a point. I know, but you add the system. Okay. okay. So not quite. The polar coordinate system is circular. That's definitely true. Or the polar coordinate system, it's not that it's circular, but it describes circles very well. Does that make sense? And very easily. Whereas rectangular coordinates, the equation of a circle is 
you know, z is equal to the square root of maybe nine minus x squared, which is messy. On the other hand, in polar coordinates, the equation of a circle would just be r equals three. Do you see how much easier polar coordinates are for describing a circle? So now I'm gonna ask you again, and I bet you can tell me this time, why do you think we call it cylindr cylindrical coordinates? Yeah, it's very easy to describe a cylinder, okay? So cylindrical coordinates are natural for describing a cylinder, okay? So let's take a look. Let me do an example. Let's suppose you have a cylinder. And I'm gonna write the cylinder in regular old coordinates so you see which is better. So as an equation, you could write it as oops, x squared plus y squared equal, I'll give an example. How about equals four? Okay, circle radius two, send at the origin. And that's not so terrible, but in cylindrical coordinates, the equation is, what do you think the equation is in cylindrical coordinates? R equals two, exactly. Which is easier? Which is easier? Do you think it, to describe a cylinder? Do you think cylindrical coordinates or rectangular coordinates have nicer equations? Or has a nicer equation? Yeah, cylindrical. I hope you all agree. R equals two is like really easy. X squared plus Y squared is four. It is a pain to type, to write, to say. Um, but if you just say a variable is a constant, that's very nice. So kind of the whole point of cylindrical coordinates is that we can express cylinders. And I'm talking about right circular cylinders that are centered at the origin and with, um, with their kind of trace at the xy plane is just r as a constant and they're beautiful. So here's a question you may know, you may not. What applications might use cylindrical coordinates? A GPS. Um, that's a good try. It turns out GPS is better in something called spherical coordinates, which is our second part of this class. And we'll see why that um, cylindrical, uh, spherical is definitely better. Um, so wires, okay? So wires, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a little fancier than, than just saying people using wires, but electrical engineering. So if you're gonna do electrical engineering, Cylindrical coordinates are for you. And I don't, I don't, I think I asked, I don't know if anyone was exactly interested in electrical engineering, but that could change too. You can change your mind. Because again, today you don't have to decide what kind of engineer you want to be. But, you know, if you decided to be an English major, then you, and you didn't like math, you're wasting your time in this class. <laughs> but if you're going to be an engineer, you, it doesn't, you don't have to commit to anything right now as long as you know you want to do some kind of engineering or hard science. And electrical engineering uses cylindrical coordinates. And the reason for that is you can imagine a wire or a circuit, which the wire is going along a straight path. I'm not sure if you realize, but when you have a wire, then from that wire, there is um, electromagnetism. Have you heard of that before? 
Okay, if you haven't, that's okay. Again, this isn't a this isn't a science class, but I like to bring in science applications. There's electromagnetism, and that electromagnetism, okay, that magnetic field due to the electrical circuit is proportional to the distance from the wire. And if you do a fixed distance from the wire, that's a cylinder. Any questions on kind of that big application? Okay, so that's the main application in kind of the, the engineering field is electrical engineering. And again, I'm not here to teach you electrical engineering. I'm here to get you ready for it. Any questions on that idea so far? Okay, the good news about cylindrical coordinates is that if you truly understood polar coordinates, then you understand cylindrical coordinates because it goes the same way. So here is the formula from con to convert from rectangular to cylindrical coordinates. So if you're given, okay, if you're given the, uh, or I guess this is, I think I have this backwards, sorry about that. I have the conversion, not words backwards. Okay, if you're given cylindrical coordinates, if you're given R, theta, and Z, and you want to convert to X, Y, and Z, then you know our, you already know how to do it. Because X is R cosine theta, Y is R sine, sine theta, and you can't get easier than Z is Z. <laughs> we'll make that a little bigger because it's important. Any questions on this? There's nothing to prove here. Because we've already done that. We've already talked about using triangles, y x is r cosine theta, y r is y y is r sine theta. And now we're just tagging along, well, z is z. And if you're confused why z is z is true, and then you're just confused because z equals z. <laughs> Any questions at all on that conversion? Okay, so. What I want to do is I'll, let's do some examples. So let's suppose you had something like a sphere. So x squared, let's do it in the equation. Oh, actually let's do something better. How about, um, Let's suppose you have Z equals R cubed sine of theta. And the question is convert this guy into rectangular coordinates. So the idea is, if you remember how to do with polars, you know how to do with cylindrical. So what do we do? What's the, what's the easiest way of doing this one? Any thoughts? Okay, we can multiply it by R. Um, I don't see any reason why you'd want to though. <laughs> That's gonna make it much messier. It's not illegal or anything, but you definitely won't help. Any other thoughts? This is a little math trick, not a, not a heavy one. I know z equals r cubed sine of theta. We know that because that's what it says. <laughs> but what's the little math trick? It's very simple. Cube root, no, no. I guess nobody, anyone seeing it? Here's the hint, look above. We'd like to see either an r cosine theta or an r sine theta. Do you see anything that kind of looks like that?
Is there a way we could get rid of the exponent? Not get rid of it. Or like z equals 3y. <laughs> okay, divide by r squared. Um, you could divide by r squared, but that's you don't need to do that. It's much easier. So let me show you. I'll show you and you'll say, of course, is my guess. You could just rewrite it as z equals r squared r sine theta. Just rewriting r cubed as r squared times r because we want to force an r sine theta. And that's how I force it. OK, that wasn't some magical thing, was it? That's typical for kind of changing your form from one coordinate system to the other is look to see what you want. We want either r cosine theta, r sine theta, and that we want one of those. Or um, r squared is fine too. But in particular, I, wanted, I have a sine of theta. I want r sine theta. So I write down r sine theta. And I say, all right, what's left? I have a r squared left. Do you agree that's simple? Yeah, much less complicated. Yeah, you guys are coming up with some interesting creative things, but this is easier. What's r squared? Remember, polar coordinates, cylindrical is polar. It's polar in 3D, though. Yeah, well, not x, not x at, but yeah, x squared. <laughs> x squared, let me put parentheses actually, x squared plus y squared. And then what's r sine theta? Why? So now I can just get rid of the middle. And there's my equation. OK, it's some kind of weird cubic -y thing. OK, it's not going to be like, you know, necessarily easy to draw. We don't have words for it or anything. Um, but there it is. We just converted it from cylindrical to rectangular. Any questions on that? So the good news is there's really nothing new here. Do you agree? Yeah, we got a Z now, but that doesn't really change anything. The Z is just sitting there. Any questions on this example? OK, what about changing coordinates? So what if we have let So now I need uh, three coordinates, three comma. Um, pi over three, that's what go pi over six. Comma five. Represent, how about the point P in Cylindrical coordinates. Right, this point in rectangular coordinates. All right, I'm gonna let you try this one because it's not a trick quest or anything. You have to remember your basic trick. I'll even start you off. Parenthesis, and then it goes after that. <laughs> so, so you can write it in rectangular coordinates.
and do exact form, not decimals. So I'll give you a minute or so. I don't see y'all jumping in. It's not supposed to be that hard. Ah, right, here we go. Um, all right, I think you have the right idea, but it's it's not an equation. Ah, uh, there we go. Yep, except you forgot the parentheses. <laughs> so what you just do is you plug in to the polar coordinate formula. So remember, x is r cosine theta. So r is three, cosine of pi over six is uh, root three over two. So we just get three, root three. Over two. And then y is r sine theta. r is three. Sine of pi over six is a half. So you get three halves. And z is easier, z is z, so that's just five. Uh, that's just uh, five. Any questions? There's not even any work to show, really. I mean, you, I guess you could show the sines and cosines, but there's not much to do here. Okay, then more review, even though it's new. And that is if you want to go the other direction. So now, all right, if you have to go, you have to go. Um, by the way, this will be recorded, so you can always watch the, the last part of it, last 25 minutes or so. So if you want to convert from rectangular to cylindrical coordinates, all you have to do is remember how you have to convert from um, rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates in 2D and just stick on as Z equals Z. So theta, if you remember, was the arc tangent of Y over X. R was the square root of x squared plus y squared, and z is z. Any questions? Any questions at all on these formulas? Again, these shouldn't look unfamiliar at all. This is exactly what we've done. We're just tagging on z equals z. There's really nothing extra to it. OK, so. If you happen to have rectangular coordinates you want to convert to cylindrical, then we know how to do that. Usually you don't use this theta equals the arctangent of y over x formula. If you have to do that, you probably don't even want to go to cylindrical coordinates. Usually just use the other stuff. So let me, let me do an example. Okay, let's suppose we have x squared, uh, let's go in equation form, x squared plus y squared minus 3x equals 5. I'm oh, sorry, equals not 5, z equals. OK, so we have a surface. Okay, and um, any idea what the surface is? In a word. Because I could have asked you this one on the quiz. I didn't, but I could have. What is the surface? Is it spherical? Um, the name of the surface, so it's not a sphere. 
It's a good try, but it's not a sphere. It's not a sphere because hyperbolic paraboloid. Um, close, but not hyperbolic. There's no negative signs. It's just a paraboloid. Okay, and it's shifted a little bit because of the three, the minus three x. That just shifts the x coordinate a bit. But this is just the same as z equals x squared plus y squared, which is just a paraboloid. So it's actually an elliptic paraboloid, if you want to call it elliptic, um, and shift it a little bit. But it's a, it's a paraboloid. Okay. The, now, the, but the question we have for today, instead of from a couple days ago, is how do you convert this to cylindrical coordinates? So what do we write? So that, well, how do you change z? What does z become? Hint is it's the easiest question in the world. Yeah, z stays z. So z becomes z. And now we look at x squared plus y squared minus 3z. And the key is to look for the parts that you recognize. What do you recognize right away? Yeah, x squared plus y squared we know is r squared. And then we have minus 3x, and that's minus 3. And what's x? R cosine theta. And there's the equation of this parabolic. Any questions on that? Hopefully you're not finding this too difficult. Most people don't. It just is what it is. All right, so that's, cylindrical coordinates are nice. Um, they are not, they're not the second most used coordinate system. Okay, by the way, what's the first most used coordinate system? Yeah, in, in uh, three dimensions, rectangular, okay? Rectangular or X, Y, Z, okay? So that's the, that's the first most used. All right, the second most used is spherical coordinates. Where have you seen a coordinate system that talks about where you are on a sphere without using X, Y, and Z? Where have you You've all seen it? Yeah, yeah, altitude, longitude, latitude, okay? So that one we've been doing for literally thousands of years, okay? Or at least over a thousand years. I don't know when we started it, but it, way before any of us were born. Um, so it's been around for a very long time. So this whole idea of using kind of latitude and longitude has been around a long, long time. Okay. So I don't know if you have all played around with latitude and longitude, but that's the GPS coordinates. So GPS is not cylindrical, GPS is spherical. Okay. So here is the definition. Spherical coordinates are a coordinate system that measures the distance from the origin, the angle from the Z axis and the angle theta that corresponds to the polar coordinates of the projection of the point onto the XY plane. Is this the same, by the way, as altitude, um, longitude and latitude? Yeah, altitude is, okay, so the answer is it's not quite the same. So first thing, your altitude, you know, we are not, by the way, 6,300 feet from the center of the earth. I hope you know that, right? 
What are we around 6,300 feet from? <laughs> yeah, sea level. So that's one thing that goes wrong. Okay. So one thing that goes wrong is when you're talking about altitude, longitude, and latitude, um, altitude is distance from sea level. Distance from sea level doesn't work if you're doing anything other than the earth. <laughs> okay. So it makes a lot more sense to be talking about the distance from the center of the earth than it does from sea level when it comes to doing most things other than, you know, maybe sailing or something like that. Okay. Um, there's another difference too. Anyone know the other difference between latitude, longitude versus, um, versus what this definition is? I don't know how good you are with your um, GPS. Anyone know? Okay, so if you don't know, um, if you want to talk about what our latitude is, what is that measured from? Do you know? Or maybe I'm thinking longitude. I think Greenwich is longitude. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it maybe it's longitude. I always get them backwards, but it's measured from the equator, not from the North Pole. Um, so typically in math, we measure it from the North Pole and go from there. Okay, that's spherical coordinates. So that's a couple things to note about the difference between spherical coordinates and kind of the GPS coordinate system that you're used to. One is spherical coordinates go from the center of the earth, not from the um, sea level. And the other is you'd measure from the North Pole, not from the equator. So the letters we use, and this is gonna be, at least one letter might be new for y'all. The distance from the center, the origin to the point we don't want to use R. Why don't we want to use R? Any thoughts? Why is that going to be confusing if we use R? Hint as we talked about today. <laughs> Thoughts? It's because it's not, we're not describing a cylinder, we're describing. Yeah. So, a distance. R is, exactly. R is used in cylindrical coordinates and not the distance from the origin to the point, but the distance from the origin to the shadow of the point. So, if we used R for spherical coordinates, it'd be really confusing which R you meant. So this is a typical thing mathematicians do. If you, if you can't use the letter you want to use, then we go to Greek. <laughs> Who knows the, the, the Greek letter for R? Yeah, row. Just remember the song, row, row, row your boat. You'll never forget row. Okay. So we use row. And row, unfortunately, don't get mad at me. You can get mad at the Greeks for this. Looks like a P, <laughs> looks like a curvy little P. Um, is that why you use row for density? Probably, okay. And unfortunately, row for density and row for the center from the origin of the point are different rows and it can get really confusing. <laughs> and that tends to happen is you tend to run out of letters. So, you know, don't blame me. Um, kind of the better way to do it would be to use Chinese. You think you'd ever run out of letters if you use Chinese? Okay, or Japanese. Chinese doesn't have letters, it has characters. Yeah, but if we used them, we'd never run out, would we? <laughs> yeah. It would be so complicated though, because I, be. I used to know how to read it. Okay, and I do know how to read a lot of them, by the way. <laughs> I know Japanese at least. Okay, not all of them because there's, the, there's like 20,000 of them and I know about 5,000 
or at one point I did, not now, okay? So rho is a letter we use for the distance from the center or from the origin to the point. Okay, and then theta, we're still gonna use theta. Again, you wanna use the same letters if you can. So we're gonna use theta for the theta you're used to, which is the angle that goes to the shadow of the point. And then we need another letter. And I have no idea why they used it, but they used it. So I'm gonna use what everyone else uses. And that's this one. Do you recognize that one? Do you know what this one's called? This third one. And one hint is it's actually easier to write than pronounce because I've heard it pronounced in two different ways. You didn't know how to read that? I don't see y'all jumping in. So let me write rho, theta, maybe I'll put in parentheses. And I, that's how you write it in English, at least. The way I learned it when I was in college was phi. I've also heard, I've also heard phi. Okay, you'll hear both. But PHI, I'll never test you on an oral exam. So as long as you know how to write it, that's good enough. And it's basically a circle with a slash through it vertically, whereas theta is a circle with a slash horizontally. Any questions on the spherical coordinate notation and what they mean? Okay, so now we can take a look at this. So here's a picture. Here's our point. And the first thing rho is the distance. How do you find the distance from the origin to a point? A straight line. No, no, how do you find it in terms of the equation? If you give an x, y, z? Um, Z, well, when we saw for like the coordinates. Okay, distance from the origin, square root of the sum of the squares. I like that better, yeah. So, or even better, you don't have to do it the square root. You just say rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Is that clear to everyone? That's the distance formula. We had that uh, last week, I believe. So, or rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus c squared. You'll see it both ways. Theta is still the r tangent y over x. That hasn't changed because it's the same theta we had before. Now it's time for phi. And the key to get phi, phi is this angle here. Do you see that? All right, so if phi is this angle here, then in the triangle, it's also this angle here. Do you agree? You learned that in uh, geometry. Okay, that was the, um, um, if, if you have uh, uh, parallel lines, this line here and this line here are parallel, and you have a line going through, then this is the alternate interior angle theorem that says that you, alternate interior angles are always the same, are, are congruent. So this is also theta. So if this is theta, then we know, we know rho, right? Okay, Oops. we know rho and we know z. Z is gonna be the adjacent for theta. Rho is hypotenuse and the adjacent and the hypotenuse are um, described by the cosine. So that gives us a big formula is that the cosine of phi is equal to z over rho, or in other words, phi is equal to cosine inverse of z over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Pretty messy, isn't it? Any questions on the trigonometry? All right, then we can go backwards. And to go backwards, we do the following. We know that x is equal to r cosine theta. Any questions on that? Okay, that we know from polar coordinates. 
okay, or cylindrical, however you want to look at it. But now we have this triangle again. So we can write R, because you can't use R, because R is not part of spherical. But we can again Yeah, we're going, we're going from, we're going to spherical, but we're kind of using cylindrical as an in-between area. That's what we're doing. So we know X equals R cosine theta, but R now, so now we got to get rid of the R to get it into spherical. So now if we look at this angle phi, which is this one, R is the opposite and rho is the hypotenuse. So we now know that the sine of phi is equal to r over r over rho. I say rho over, it's equal to, um, yeah, r over rho. Okay, so let me just write that in. We know the sine of phi, better write in equation form sine of phi equals r over rho. So that means that r equals rho sine phi. Any questions on that very basic um, algebra, trig and then algebra? Okay, now X is R cosine theta, but R is rho sine theta. So that means X is rho cosine theta sine phi. So R is rho sine phi. So there's your rho sine phi, and then we have the cosine theta. Similarly, y is equal to r sine theta, but r is rho sine phi, so we could say y is rho sine theta sine phi. And z, so now we go back to the triangle, here's our z, and we know that we have z, we have rho, here's phi, z is the adjacent, Rho is the opposite. So we know that the cosine of phi will be equal to z over rho, or z equals rho cosine phi. So very important, very important formulas. Again, I derived them. You, you don't have to derive them every time. These are probably want to memorize. This comes up a lot. So this is how to convert from um, this should say rectangular, this should say spherical. And this should say spherical. This is to convert from rectangular to spherical coordinates. Any questions on that derivation and how we got that? Okay, then the bigger, the most important, by the way, is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. Okay, so I think I'm gonna write that on the next line because it's, so, it's just so important. Any questions on that big equation? So now, why do we call it spherical coordinates? Why do we call it spherical? Yeah, it's easy to describe a sphere. So let's suppose, so convert, how about a very basic sphere? X 
x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25 into spherical coordinates. So you better be able to do that almost in your sleep. What is that? Would it be one, like the radius equals five? Yeah, and but then, not the radius, what do we call it? Rho. Yeah, row, 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 <laughs> row, 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 just remember that. <laughs> so that's just row equals five, very simple. What if we had something a little different? I'm not gonna change too much. All right, first thing, what is this, by the way? In a word, what's the shape? X squared plus Y squared plus 2Z squared equals 1 is a, or N. What is this guy? I could have asked you on the quiz today. Yeah, it's an ellipsoid. And I want to convert this into spherical coordinates. What's the trick? Any ideas of the trick to make this really easy? See y'all jumping in? I have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, uh, plus two z squared. What would I like it to be? If I could have my way, what would I rather have this be? Yeah, no two. So guess what? I get rid of the two. Sound good? Okay, now you can't just get rid of the two, but you can always say that's plus z squared. Do you agree you're allowed to do that? So the key is you write what you want it to be and then adjust. So now this is actually pretty easy. What's x squared plus y squared plus z squared? That's the row squared. Uh oh. What's z squared? And the key is we've got it. Z is rho cosine phi. So Z squared is rho squared cosine squared phi. And that's equal one. You could solve for rho if you want. And you could say that rho is equal to, so basically you factor out a row, divide and take a square root, and it's gonna be one over the square root of one plus cosine squared. Of five. Any questions? Any questions on this conversion? I want to do one more because it's kind of an important one. What if we had z squared? Come on. Equals x squared plus y squared.
In a word, what is that one? Yeah, that's a cone. What do you think? Do you think it's better to use spherical or do you think it's better to use cylindrical? Depends on what you're doing. What do you think is gonna be a prettier equation? Nicer, easier to, to read and write. Uh, cylindrical. Okay, cylindrical is very easy to convert because that's Z, Z squared is R, is R squared or Z equals? R, right? That's kind of nice, isn't it? Let's try spherical, see what happens. How do I do turn this into spherical? The key here is we have extra plus y squared, but would we like it to say? What's it missing? Hopefully y'all know. It's missing a z squared, isn't it? So I'm gonna write plus z squared. Now I can't just do that. I need to add on the left and right. So I'm gonna put a z, two z squared. And that's kind of nice because Two z squared is two times rho squared times z is, if you remember, let me, in case you may not remember, z is rho cosine phi. So rho squared cosine squared of phi. Equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. I can simplify that greatly. What can I do to both sides right away? I can take the square root, okay, but what else can I do? I can get rid of the rho squared. I could divide by row squared. Okay, and I'll do both at once because we're running out of time. And I get the square root of two. Oops, try that again. Times the cosine of theta. Equals one. But check this out. A cosine of phi, not theta. That means cosine of phi is equal to one over root two. Well, cosine of phi equals one over root two means that phi is equal to what? Pi over four. And that's beautiful. Just one variable and is a constant. So it turns out spherical coordinates are great when you're dealing with cones. And you would probably never guess that until you actually work this out. Okay, another couple, one more quickie, and that is phi goes from zero to not two pi, but pi. And that's because if you go down to pi and then swing it around by two pi along theta, you get everything. So I'll let you think about that, but we're out of time. I'm gonna stop the share. And I'm going to stop the recording.